So it's been a nice run. It's been a nice little run. I'm not going to minimize how good it's felt. I just don't know whether to trust it. Uh, you know, you're right, Brian. I mean, look, when it was going down, it felt horrible. And all the talk at that point was, hey, what's the average bear market? 35, 37. We've clawed back quite a bit of it. And now we're at this uh, inflection point to see where we're going to go. Now, Friday's numbers at the end of the day were pretty good. I mean, to, to, to us, what it said was, hey, we're not in stagflation mode. We, we do have growth. We have strong labor, which is really important to this market. And I think going forward, when you see input prices dropping, whether it's copper, lumber, uh, inventories that are high, you know, you've got some pressure now on bringing inflation down. So I think those two will be interesting to see going forward, because the key thing that, you know, everybody's calling for is what are earnings going to do? Earnings are going to drive this market going forward now, not multiple expansion, not liquidity. It's going to be where do we find earnings and where do we find companies that can actually make money? Oh, we find them by listening to guys like you, Surat. So where are they? So, so are I think, they? you know, when you look at it, I mean, if you look at the overall multiple of the market, it's pretty much back to where we were at the beginning of the year. I, I find value in companies that are trading at below market multiples that have better growth. So take a Morgan Stanley at nine times earnings and a 4% dividend yield. Or take an American Express that is growing double digits. And that's just into the financial services sector. You go to the industrial sector and really well-run companies like Honeywell and Ingersoll Rand. What are they doing? They're, they have global production. They've made all their earnings in a time of high inflation. And I think that those are the companies you kind of have to watch for. And then if you want to be a little defensive, you have healthcare companies, companies like Bristol Myers that trade at 10 times earnings with over 3% yield. So there are a lot of companies out there. You don't have to go to the speculative fervor and say, hey, I need cash flows down 5, 10 years in the future. You can get really good companies today and you can actually barbell your, your portfolio and you don't have to be focused all on one, one side, you can be diversified and yet partake in the upside. Would you be exposed to anything consumer related, Sarat? There's a lot of talk about a consumer slowdown. Credit card debt is just soaring. At some point, those bill, I think those bills are going to have to be paid. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and, and Brian, you're seeing that already in some of the consumer stocks, the cyclical stocks. I mean, GM trades at five times earnings. Delta trades at, you know, nine times earnings. So, the market's already saying, hey, these are stocks that are going to feel slow demand down the future. Now, those two companies that I mentioned, we like them because guess what? They're con they don't have control of their supply right now. And that's one of the best things for them is as demand does slow down and their supply comes back up, if they actually can perform and keep margins and cash flow intact, I think these are wonderful companies. But there are areas out there where the consumer spent a lot of money. So you look at your Pelotons of the world, you know, and you look at some of the others that had pull in demand. I think that's where... Uh, you have to be careful because extrapolation is just going to get uh, investors into trouble. So be careful because the consumer is now also very wary of where they're going to yeah. spend more of their money. And I think that they're going to spend it on services, not products. So that's why you see the cruise lines, the hotels, everybody doing well. But the washing machines and the you know dishwashers, those are in trouble.